Essentially, so, I mean, I think what we need to take on board here is the kind of the wider con context that this is a system that, a uh, system of sanctions that only applies to a relatively small number of people. Um, the vast majority of people on benefits aren't sanctioned. They're not facing the sanction system. So the people you're seeing in that film we've, we've just seen are the very, very hardest end of, of what we're talking about here. Secondly, there's a huge amount of international evidence that shows that conditionality or requirements placed on people who are, who are on benefits um, backed up by financial sanctions, for, uh, penalties for not doing what they should be in terms of looking for work is effective in getting people back to work more quickly. And thirdly, that this is a system that's supported by both the vast majority of the public, but also benefit claimants themselves. And that was one of the surprising things for my review. We spoke to a lot of benefit claimants, to charities who support benefit claimants, and even people who've been sanctioned. And they supported the principle behind the uh, system. What's your reaction as you watch that film? I mean, do you think those people should have been sanctioned? Or do you think they're just, if you like, the cost of a sanctioning system that you're going to have some people who shouldn't be sanctioned who are sanctioned because it i mean it looked like some of them were going to find it quite difficult to get a job i think probably weren't they absolutely i mean i think this is probably not for me a question of whether they should or should not have been sanctioned but the fact they've been sanctioned means that they've not been seeking work or they've turned down a job opportunity that was available to them what my review said was that in certain situations where people are obviously vulnerable um we're talking homelessness here that should act as a signal for people to step in and provide more support for those people so they can get themselves out of that situation. Did, did you see I, Daniel Blake, the movie? I've not seen it. You've not seen it. Ken Loach, do you recognise th this basic finding that some conditionality in a system that says you've got some responsibilities and you're punished if you don't, you, you know, if you don't meet them, basic responsibility, do you accept any of that at all in a benefit system? Um, well, I, I think w what's clear is that um, Sanctions are a cruel and vindictive way of treating vulnerable people. Um, they, uh, people are set up to fail. Um, the, the, the system is there in order to trap them. Um, when they go to a job centre, they're not shown the jobs that are available. The job coaches aren't allowed to show them what jobs are available. And people are in fear. Um, and a lot of people are, are, are sanctioned because of the work capability assessment. Um, and that again, I mean, we, we heard stories of a, a, a man who had a heart attack in the course of the assessment. He had to go to hospital. He was sanctioned because he couldn't complete the assessment. Um, th there are a kind of absurd stories of people sanctioned for being a few moments late. Um, and of course, we know job centre staff, and I don't know if Matthew Oakley got this in his report, but job centre staff are given targets. Uh, they call them uh, expectations. And if they don't uh, sanction a certain number of people per week, then they themselves get into trouble. Let's, let's the, just the, pick the up DWP that specific... The DWP staff put, told us this all the time. Let and, me put and that so specifically to Matthew. The DWP because, of that because of that terrible atmosphere they have to work in. Matthew, is that, is that actually correct, that they have to sanction a certain number of people? Well, I'm telling you it is but correct. They told let, us. Let me just turn that around the other way. Wouldn't you be more concerned if we didn't know how many people, peop, uh, how many people a particular job centre uh, office was, were sanctioning, that actually... But hang on, there, I, I, I want them to target that we didn't, people... That we, didn't, that we didn't know they were sanctioning, say, 30% of people. Is it not right that actually in terms of standard management practice, we understand how many people, what proportion of people on benefits each office is sanctioning? But do we, do, are they targeted? Are they, the point. are they forced, are they told you should be sanctioning this number? That's, that's not my experience. We, we spoke to a number of uh, job centre staff uh, in the course of the review. Right. Very, very much, actually, what, what we found was a lo the large proportion of those, of those staff actually supported the system. OK, we'll, we'll, we'll hold that factual question. Ken Loach, I'm interested in what... You know, you're stuck in the dilemma of saying there's no conditionality at all or there are some kind of sanctions. And I... I mean, in a way, you're, in a sound like you're arguing there should be no sanctions at all. Uh, no, or is no, that... I'm, I'm saying that no, nobody supports cheating um, and nobody supports tax cheats, but they don't seem to get the same coverage. Um, I mean, I think, it, yes, of course, uh, the, the sh people should not cheat and there should be a way of dealing with that. But when you, when you stop people's money, you force them into the direst poverty. They have nothing. They're driven onto the streets, they're, they're made homeless, yeah. they're driven to food banks. And just think, last year, out of one group of food banks, 1,100,000 food, bank, food bags were given. 1,100,000. Half a million of those went to families where there were children. Children would not eat 
unless people put tins into a charity bag. Now, don't you think that's absolutely disgusting? And we take that now, we accept that as, uh, that's part of our society now. Mm. And, and that's the system that uh, Matthew Oakley appears to be defending. I mean, what I, what I would say, this is a, a system that certainly the vast majority of the public actually support, that claimants that we've spoken oh, to, the claimants support, it's, it's claimants a, support the system. system. That's not to say there you are some vulnerable people who well, need let, more help let me put to manage you, that Matthew, system let me put you more you, effectively. There are quite a lot of people who are... We have a binary system. You're sort of either capable for work and have to go and look for it, or you're not. But there are a lot of people who are kind of on the margins, and they're going to find working quite difficult. They have ragged lives, or the... The responsibilities are actually just a little bit onerous for where they are or they have low-level mental health difficulties. And are we applying sanctions to those people? Because it, that, I think most people who believe in sanctions would say we do not want sanctions applied to people who are not going to be capable of holding down a job. I, I think, and I think, I think the point, the point uh, here Matthew, is we, we need, Matthew, we need, we need, we need to understand here Sorry, that... Matthew and then Ken, go on Matthew. We need to understand what a sanction is here. This is not people being sanctioned for not being in work. Being unemployed or out of work is not the cause of a sanction. It is not doing what you've agreed to do. And remember, let's, let's remember that people are agreeing to do these things. It's seeking work, it's taking steps towards work. In your case of a mental health condition, it might be actually you're taking steps to you know, prepare yourself for work, to take on some kind of activity which improves, improves your health condition. This isn't people being sanctioned for not being in work, it's for not taking the steps towards work right. they've agreed. Ken Lowe, you can have the last word. Um, well, people are sanctioned when they're in work. Um, a woman was sanctioned for going on leave when she was on a zero-hours contract. She was sanctioned for that. Um, but we're, we're, we're missing the point. This is an extraordinarily cruel way to deal with the poorest and most vulnerable people. And if all the people who, who did every, fulfilled every dot and com of what they would required, there would still be 1.6 over a million people unemployed. There'd still be 5 million people underemployed. It's the system that creates the poverty and we're punishing the poorest and blaming them for their poverty, blaming the unemployed Ken, for the unemployment. Ken Loach. And that's, that's really false and Matthew should accept that. Ken Loach, Matthew, thank you both very much indeed.